All right, this is another episode of The Quit List. We thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are absolutely fabulous. Just had to say that to you. All right, um, but what we want to do before we get going is we want you to go ahead and share, pick up your cell phones, to, to extend your index finger. I think that's called the index finger. Whatever that <laughs> finger is, hit that finger, hit the share button and go ahead and share this with all your friends. I promise you, index you will finger. not disappoint them. I'm going to give you three seconds to do that, like three, two, and one. You guys have just in, tuned in to the quit list. I'm Dr. Stan. Today I'm joined on the show by my guest, Dr. Gerard McClendon. Dr. McClendon is a social psychologist and professor at Chicago State University. Dr. McClendon, welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Awesome. I'm also joined on the show by Dara Robertson. Dara has just <laughs> made the list of young people to watch under 30. Dara, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. And we're also joined by Dr. Harita McDowell. Dr. McDowell is a community psychologist and author and professor. Dr. McDowell, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's gonna be fun. Issue number one on the quit list, <laughs> gender reveal parties. For over a decade, parents have jumped at the gender reveal trend. An ultrasound is placed in a sealed envelope. You go to the bakery, you get a pink and blue <laughs> cake. You might want to hold it as a surprise, but everybody is not happy about this trend. There's one Facebook page that actually has banned the term gender <laughs> reveal. Oh, wow. They said, this. they said, please realize that we come from all around the globe and we all aren't the same. We ask that you do not use the phrase gender reveal and find a more accurate description. I'm gonna to come to you, Dr. Gerard McClendon. But before we talk about gender reveal, see, he's ready to get going already. Before we talk about gender reveal, <laughs> Before I talk about gender reveal, I really want to kind of explore the idea of baby showers in general. Now, most baby showers, at least all the ones that I'm familiar with, invite women and not men. Is that a sexist thing? Well, first of all, I've been to some baby showers and I had uh, for the most part, a spectacular time at the baby showers. Some of the games at the baby showers, I was a little out of place, uh, a little awkward in certain spots. So I just kind of worked my way to the kitchen and get up here. But but here's the thing, uh, you know, when it comes to gender reveals, I think it's a Neanderthal backwards outdated concept. First of oh, all, wow. this whole thing about pink and blue, that's ridiculous. What if the boy likes pink? What if the girl likes blue? Second thing, you know, in some Asian cultures, they look at a girl being born as a quiet happiness. That's ridiculous. And I think what happens at gender reveal parties is that First of all, the couple should be the only ones that know the revelation. It shouldn't be this huge group of people saying, oh, it's a boy. There's pink stuff floating in the air. Oh, you know, the girl. It's a girl. There's pink stuff. It's a boy. There's blue stuff. You know, the only people that need to know the gender reveal, the couple. That's it. Backwards, Neanderthal. And I think it could be even damaging to a relationship. That's well, very just, interesting. That's well, that's very interesting. I just, uh, if I can I just, interject. Well, yes, go ahead. For a moment, uh, because Doc seems passionate about this being almost uh, offensive. I mean, to use the term uh, Neanderthal, I'm thinking completely opposite. I think that, you know, um, I don't have children and I'm one of those girls who I'm not looking forward to a baby shower because some of the games are cheesy. Um, I really just want a party that I happen to be pregnant at, um, if that makes sense, because I really um, I enjoy attending baby showers that are uh, non-traditional, that include the male, that uh, is more so a family gathering, if you will, where we're all excited about the new legacy that's going to continue on our name. I think that that should be the feeling. I also think that it should be completely up to uh, that couple to decide what they want to share and not share. So I personally enjoy the new trends of celebrating the pregnancy, especially in 
uh, a country where it wasn't something that was always smiled upon. I mean, women are just now in a space where you can be excited about having a pregnant belly and we're seeing you know infant mortality rates change because we see more women posting that they're breastfeeding in public so this whole idea of being able to still feel pretty still feel beautiful still feel celebrated during what could be considered one of the most uh challenging times of you and your partner's life i think that um Anytime you have the opportunity to continuously celebrate something that's that monumental, you can say, hey, I have a huge family and I want the entire village to be around from day one uh, to I deliver. And that's okay. that couple of choice. McDowell, and then you have Dr. Couple McDowell, choice. It sounds like it sounds like I'm hearing you say that you are for you think it's a good I'm thing. For it. I'm for it. I think that I mean, we can definitely dig deeper into identities and things like that. But obviously as the world turns uh we're going to have some hiccups but as a pregnant couple i think that sometimes it can be economical they know what to buy you for the baby shower you don't have to return okay. a lot of babies so, you can change so dr baby. mcclendon it says it's neanderthal dr yeah. mcdowell yeah. says she loves it dara yeah. what about yeah. it <laughs> um i'm gonna have to fervently agree with uh gerard i i hate gender reveals as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, um, I think that trend should have never been started. And this is far beyond uh, the parties turning into more festive events. I think in the beginning, um, the part that, first of all, we do know, of course, uh, gender and sex are two totally different things. So just mm -hmm. scientifically, it makes no sense to have a gender reveal for your child. Gender is um, fluid. It has a lot to do with that person, not so much their anatomy. So first off, I'd agree that changing the name of a gender reveal uh, might be an important factor. But in general, I think the part that most disturbed me about the trend is that um, the disregard for um, the way that that child will feel. There are pictures, there are videos. Um, there's a lot that goes into gender reveals. And I know sometimes people are very emotional, but the reactions oftentimes um, to this life that you're bringing into the world, not being um, the gender you choose sounds fun and it's a game. Uh, but when people get so angry, uh, they throw things, they're crying, they're upset. Some women are really, really upset. And so you do have to think that one day your kid is going to look back and see the pictures and videos of you having a whole fit of you not having the child you desire. And I just think in general, it kind of sets up a really weird norm um, to have expectations so, so heavily put on a child and a whole party and a competition and the child is going to see that i have no idea whether my parents wanted a boy or a girl i have no idea what they were thinking when my mom was pregnant with me and i'm sure they probably long forgotten but i would remember pictures of my mom throwing a table over because she's not having a boy <laughs> okay wow. now wow whoa. Right. I'm, I'm, wow. Whoa. Those, wow. That's so, so, so let me jump in now two things that really disturb me about gender reveals. One, how do you gift? Uh, do you just say gift cards or money? Because if you come bring in some gender, you know, gender, you know, specific, specific mm -hmm. items, you know, you, you bring a football and, you know, oh, really? Uh, you, you bring, you know, a, a cupcake maker, really? <laughs> Come on, that's I have a problem with that. The second thing is the problem is with how people celebrate. If you have a gender reveal party in California, shoot fireworks off. It's a boy, and then you start a California wildfire. Oh my that is god! Totally irresponsible, and we've seen that happen <laughs> on several occasions at gender reveal parties. I, I, I think that that fireworks. Is, is... People shot fireworks mm -hmm. out of the gender reveal, and 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 a forest caught on fire. Oh, I think that we're attaching things uh, to the extreme levels. I mean, of course, we don't want to encourage fireworks on, for any reason, just like we don't want to encourage balloon releases that they're doing all over the world that mess up the environment. So I don't want to attach something that's completely irresponsible, whether it's your birthday or your bar mitzvah, to a gender reveal. So Dara, I wanted to chime in. That is definitely a negative anytime there's a celebration for one and there is is a regret for the other. So I totally agree that the reaction is relative to that mom. That's a trip. 
I'm thinking on the more positive aspect of the reveal. And I'm definitely okay with changing the name, whether, and I've, I've gone to them where it's, um, if it's two black Greek letter organizations, they'll say this or that. If it's the mom is, you know, the doctor and dad is the fireman, are you going to be a doctor or a fireman? And it's more specific to that mom and that dad or that partnership and something that um, is specific to them. So uh, I went to one where one of the wives is a fan of uh, Martin and the other one was a fan of the Fresh Prince. So it was this whole battle of the 90s versus 80s. And it was really a... Uh, I'm going to need this village to get me through whatever it is that I'm doing. So I totally agree that when things are taken to the extreme and you're capitalizing on getting, getting gifts, because to my knowledge, there's no etiquette just yet because this is a new trend, but it's always a challenge. And I've loved that people are erring towards honoring the dad uh, where there he is. So it's interesting how it's shifting. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you you just said you went to a party. You said one of the moms. So it sounds like this this instance, there were two mothers, women. right? two women. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Dara, I want to go to you. Do mm -hmm. you believe that this trend, whether you like it or dislike it, do you believe that this has anything to do with the idea that someone does not want their child identified by gender because they want them to be free to choose later? No. Um, I think actually uh, it's it's the opposite. Um, you are, I mean, you're publicly announcing the gender of your child to everyone, um, and even before your child's birth, where you would actually find out the accurate gender of your child, um, you are putting expectations on your child publicly. And I think what it really points back to for me, um, the trend in general, is our constant need to perform because of social media. We consistently need people to validate us, to validate our experiences, but more importantly, just to be happy with us, to like us. And I think that if it was really about um, celebrating a child, probably the theatrics would be a more limited or people would say, hey, this isn't a gift giving event. I'm going to have a baby shower where you shower the baby. This is just for you to come and celebrate. But I do think that that's not the reality of what it is. The reality of what it is, it is a very large show. It requires now a whole nother party, a whole nother event, this extravaganza. And most importantly, again, it is putting your pregnancy, which is a very sensitive time, which is a very volatile time, and one that you really don't even know, especially black women, if you're gonna survive, let alone that child is gonna survive. But now it's been put on a public display. I remember talking to my mom one time and she mentioned that you know, 20, 30 years ago, people didn't even ask what the name of your child was before it was born because it was just inappropriate and invasive. And I think at this point, we've gotten to a point where everything has to be for public consumption, including the gender of a child that has not even been born yet. OK, we've only got a couple of more minutes on this particular topic, but I want to find out the idea that when you have a baby, if it's a boy, generally you think blue. If it's a girl, you think pink. And I want to ask Dr. McClendon this question. If you do, are you okay or not with having <laughs> a child where, where the instead of giving the boy a little truck, as an example, and giving the girl a doll, how about giving the boy a doll and giving the girl a truck? What about that? That sit well with you? That's fine, but just give me a gift card. You know what I'm saying? Because and, and I'll and let the parents decide later on. This is the problem we have in society. Everyone tries to place definition on the next person. I am in no way saying yep. that there shouldn't be definitions on things. We have to have definitions on things. That's our logos. That's our way of understanding the environment. That's the epistemology of our lives. How do I come to know things in this world? At the same time, if I thrust those things upon you, you must believe this. It, you know, it's a, this is a boy. This is a girl. That becomes problematic. Absolutely. And I think that in this particular instance, when we err on the side of judgment, we begin to project our own personal strong convictions 
on an umbrella celebration, right? So I don't feel like I have the right to say that someone's extravagance is excessive and takes away from the sanctity of their particular pregnancy because I, for one, wish that I had pictures of my mom when she was pregnant with me. But like I said, during that time, it wasn't something that you were even allowed as a Black woman to celebrate like that. So I think that it's an advantage that you have the choice now now to say, I don't have to be ashamed and only go to the big giant maternity section and cover myself and be docile during this time if I don't choose to. I also have the right to go completely underground and just pop up and say, hey, I've had a child. And I think that with changing the name, with respecting the culture of that family, it can be a wonderful celebration, but anytime it's taken to the extreme, it can become very excessive and also add to, I agree with Dara, the attention getting nature of our society. But I really think that it's always relative to that union that is reproducing it during that time. Well, it's time to hit it and quit it on issue number one. <laughs> Hit it means yes, and quit it means no. <laughs> the question is, should parents stop having gender reveal parties? I think I know where this is going to come out. You know. Hit it or quit it. So as far as the village aspect that Dr. McDowell mentioned, I totally agree with, you know, let the village know that you're having a child. But as far as the sex gender reveal party, quit it. Yeah. Dara, hit it or quit it. I'm all for celebrating pregnancies, women, um, the divine feminine, all those great things. Uh, but I also think you do that at your baby shower. Quit it. Yeah. Dr. McDowell. <laughs> I am going to say hit it. And I'm going to say hit it, but I'm going to say Stop the sociological boxes. I'd much rather prefer to come to a celebration specific to your lineage. Hey, if one side is from Mississippi and the other side is from Georgia, let's all be Mississippians or Georgians because those are going to drive through the bloodline of that child. Don't give me the pink and the blue. Don't give me the Barbie dolls and the Transformers. Give me something deeper if we're going to do it. Do it right. Issue number two on the quit list. Mama's boys. Now, recently, <laughs> recently, on social media, a video surfaced. In this video, a husband pulls up with his car to pick up his wife. His mm -hmm. mother is sitting on the front seat. The wife is livid about the situation, and she goes off on the husband. He gets out of the car, walks around, tries to calm his wife. All the while, the mother is smirking and taunting the oh, wife mama. from the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, both of these women were wanted to sit on the front seat, and neither one of these women were willing to budge from the front seat. Clearly, this guy has a problem. The first question I want to find out, I'm going to go ahead and go to Dara on this. Is there such a thing as a mama's boy? And if there is one, is this guy crossing the line over? Yeah, I mean, I think of course there's a mama's boy um there are some men who have a relationship with their mother i think that might be extraordinary compared to uh the way that most people interact with their mothers um but i think that um also the thing that stuck out to me more than anything wasn't so much about the seat it was more so about the relationships um and so i was a little concerned uh, as to why you would console your wife and then say, hey, just just let it go or whatever. If you, I mean, based on the video, they obviously had some sort of tension, some sort of history there. Um, it just seems to me if you're watching your mom smirk and you're consoling your wife, like, let it go, uh, you probably shouldn't be married. What do you think about that, Dr. McDowell? I think that when I watched the video, I agree with Dara. There was obviously background tension between wife and mom, and there is always an undertone of competition, unfortunately, as one moves out and one moves in. So I felt for uh, the husband, but I also noticed that he was enabling their tactics and their antics. And I think that if the goal is for them to uh, understand the same space, but also understand that there is a number one and a number two, 
um, if you will, in that particular category. And if there was no background issues, it's no big deal if I'm moving for my elders. It's no big deal if I'm getting in the backseat because she requires more leg room for whatever reason. But if I know that you are leveraging this opportunity to let me know that you're first or that you're better than me or that your son will pick me over you, then you've completely shifted the dynamic and we're playing an unnecessary game. Dr. McClendon, so assume assume that this mother is playing this game like I'm more important in your life than your wife is. And that's what it appeared to be on this particular video. So let's assume that that is the case. What should the husband have done? Well, as a mama's boy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, Dr. McClendon. <laughs> Here's the deal. There are very few mothers on planet Earth who think that another, that any woman is good enough for her son. That's the first thing. The second, okay. thing, the second thing is mama got a ride in the back seat. Unless it's medical or unless it's some other circumstance, mama has to ride in the back seat, especially a smirking mother. Absolutely. There comes a time when a man has to check his mom or not even check your mom show enough respect for your for your partner to say i'm clinging to my partner mother you're my mother i'm a grown man it's time for you to get in the back seat we'll get you some flowers we'll buy you <laughs> but as far as you you know basically commandeering this front seat where i am and putting my wife in the back seat that's not gonna happen well, and it seemed like a conversation that should have been had a long time ago before the seat situation happened. I mean, the, it seemed like, you know, putting her in her place about the seat is probably the most irrelevant conversation out of all the ones that they've probably had leading up to that. And I think that's probably the most striking part of the video is that it's gotten to a point where an argument about whether who's going to sit in the front seat turns into a knockdown drag out. Because it was one of many things. It was definitely one of many things. Mom is fixing a plate. Mom is rearranging cabinets when she visits. You know, you give her one guest room, she wants to stay in the other guest room. She wants the exact same Christmas gift you get the wife. Why I don't have that bag? So that mother hopped off of the screen to me as something that is someone that is very, very, very intentional um, and probably single herself. Oh. Let, me, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Is, I'm so <laughs> oh, oh, he's going crazy. All right. Mm -hmm. So here's the question. Is that a deal breaker? Should that be a deal breaker for a woman? You hook up with the guy, you find out all of a sudden that this guy is a mama's boy. Is that a deal breaker? I want to, Dar, just yes or no? Yes. Dr. Medell. Yes. Mm. Okay. So the, the idea Dr. that- Dan, why did you move me? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, here's the idea. You, you know, you, you guys are saying that that the there are other issues. There's other things that are going on. There's other types of baggage, which I agree that that probably is the case. From this guy's perspective, the husband, does it appear or would you assume that both his mother and his wife seem to be very, for lack of a better word, ignorant? In this particular situation, or do, controlling, or controlling. So, okay. Controlling. So, so this, it, do do you think that that this guy maybe attracts this type of woman into his life? That's hmm. a huge assumption that she's controlling or anything. We, I mean, most of the time there's a action and a reaction, and so I think, like we said, there probably was a buildup, and I don't know that this person is necessarily controlling or that she has the same temperament or personality as his mom just because she reacted to a situation negatively. Um, it probably was an equal and opposite reaction to her action. Yeah. I do think that there's a connection. Um, and this, this goes back to what Dr. McClendon said. He immediately said that he would have to interject to make sure that according to his household with him and his partner, these are the rules and regulations of respect as it relates to our home. And I think that if you are with a mother who has never allowed you to assert yourself in any capacity, you wanted baseball, she picked football. You said you didn't like Brussels sprouts, she forced them down your throat. You wanted to do HBCU, she pushed you to a PWI. 
you begin to attract other women who don't allow you to have a voice. And that is where you end up in between a pot and a kettle um, of possessive and controlling women on accident because you did end up in some way becoming attracted to your mom. So you can't assert yourself in either space. Yeah. And it, may even, it may even be formulaic too. I mean, yeah. we may have to go to E equals MC squared here or, or look at Einstein's theory of relativity because, <laughs> because what I'm looking at is this. If, mm. your, if your mother lives 500 to 1,000 miles away from you, then mm -hmm. you probably could tolerate more when she comes to town or when you visit her. But if, but, if, but if your mom lives three miles away and always sees you, oh, wow, you're going to have some serious problems. If, if, mm -hmm. if my mother lives a thousand miles away, I see her once or twice a year. She can sit in the front seat, mm -hmm. but she lives three miles away. Sorry, third <laughs> row. Third in, row. In the third row. <laughs> Okay, so, so here's, the, here's the question. We, we've actually only got a few more minutes left, but I, I want to find out just really quickly on a, a couple of things. Number one, this guy does seem, as Dr. McDowell just said, between a, a, a kettle and a pot or something like that. He, <laughs> did, he does. It does seem that he's in some hot water because he's in between a problem. He has a real problem on his hands. So from the husband's perspective, in terms of how a man who may find himself in that situation ought to behave, does it appear, do you think that it goes to his level of maturity in terms of how to handle this type of situation? What should this guy do? This guy is like, he, he's almost stymied. What do you think about that, Dr. McDonald? Oh, you're coming straight to me. <laughs> yeah, why not? I, I think that he's put himself into the situation and if he's not 3,000 miles away, like Dr. McClendon said, and mom is a bit closer, then it's a constant battle that will eventually cause strain on their relationship. So then you have to pick. And unfortunately, in some of these instances, laying your foot down 20, 30, 40 years into uh, your life, it's hard for mom to adjust. So we run into situations where mom decides that she's going to act out, but you have to pick is my partner who I am building what's next with the priority over who was part of my foundation. And hopefully mature heads will prevail. But according to that video, once he picks, mom is not going to want to be bothered. Uh, doc, Dr. McClendon, let's assume that the person is, the, the mother, is trying to call the shots in your home. What should the, the daughter do, the wife? Well, you know, there comes a time when everyone has to put their foot down. And it doesn't have to be in a loud manner. It can be very quiet. But many times, it's not even what you say. It's the behavior. So if so, if you know someone can you can run over you can run over them. They'll let you run over them. There comes a time when you just have to say, wait a minute, this is disrupting my union with my spouse. So I have to make sure that I draw the boundaries, even if they're soft boundaries. Those boundaries have to be drawn by the spouse and by, by the man so things can be uh, respectful. That's all you want. You know, no love lost. I just need a little respect here. All right, thank you. That is, it's time again for us to hit it or quit it on issue number two, because we're out of time for the show. Issue number two, of course, is mama's boy. Should he make the wife sit on the back seat? Should he make the mother sit on the back seat? Now, here's the question. Remember, hit it says yes, and quit it says no. The question is, and I want to go to Dr. McClendon, should he make the mother sit on the back seat? And I think your answer is already. Yeah, sit on the back seat. Sit on the back seat. He said third row. <laughs> Dara, Dara uh, hit it or quit it. Mother sit on the back seat, yes or no? Yeah. Dr. McDonald. In the back. Mm -mm. Okay, there you have it, folks. Um, this has been another episode of The Quit List. Now, we've been talking about this idea of mama's boys. You can actually read more about that in my book, which is called The Black Man's Quit List which gives you over 40 things that black men should do in order to have a better life. There you go. Dr. McClendon, the black man's quit list. Check it out. It's right there on Amazon. So make sure you go ahead and pick up your copy. I've been joined on the show today by my guest, Dr. Gerard McClendon, PhD.
Dara Robertson, who is the newest person on the list of young people to watch under 30, and Dr. Like Harita me. McDowell. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys being here. You guys are amazing. You guys are great. And we'll see you folks right back here next time on The Quit List. Bye. Camped out at home for COVID? Join us, Indie TV, <laughs> where you will see the talk <laughs> shows, movies, drama, action, and Ugh. comedy. Be the first and see it first. Sign up now for free at Indie TV.